Hi, I'm Rob and it's Guild Wars time in Gems of War. War 1. Red Day, we're up against Soulless Hearts and Me Joe. Right, let's see what Me Joe has. Oh, that's in the wrong. I probably will use this team, but that's the wrong Centurazul team. That needs to be all red. So let me just change that before we have a hideous mistake. Right, and Archer, Doomadax, Divinish Bala, Wrath, Arachnian, Weaver. Starts Divine Allies with 40% mana, and then transforms red to skulls and green to yellow. And enchants two random allies too, so that is good. Is a Elf rather than Divine, so they're not going to start with 40% mana, which is interesting. Do they have a Medal of Arnie one to give them a note? Just Medal of Orpheus. Okay. Right. So um, I think I'm going to use this team for this. A really nice team. Centurion, Fist of Heaven, Zulgoth, Gimlet, Stormbrew, who starts with full mana. And if we have a chance to transform green to brown, we will, because we want a nice quick start on Centurion. Centurion. As a 10% chance to devour a random enemy, which we don't really want, but we then have, we then do convert all skulls to times to a wild card, which usually charges up Zulgoth really quickly, who then just kills somebody outright, kabosh your dead mate, creates 12 skulls, which then Senshurigan can then convert again to wild cards and repeat the process. And I'm just going to check my stuff on this. Archer is good because I want them to be entangled from the start. Yes. And two times Medal of Orpheus and an Arnu. You don't need things like a Nysha on this because uh, on that weapon, that's more than enough explosion of yellows. So Nysha is not going to affect that. Centurion is not affected by Nysha's. It's, there's no boost to the spell. And same with Zulgoth. And Gimlet starts with a full mana. So yeah, I think we'll roll with this. And as long as we get brown and some red at the start, should be okay. Doesn't matter about the entangle, really, because we're not relying on that. Right, but first we are looking for is this, green to brown. Got a single one there. And apart from that, uh, not much else. And with no red and no brown matches, I am tempted to do that straight away. Just going to check what I'll be leaving them if I do that. I'll collect that. And obviously you don't know what's going to drop down from that. I'll be leaving them a massive brown match for their wrath, which I don't really want. I don't want them really getting their axe up either. So I may have to take a colour I don't particularly want here. I might have to take this yellow match here. Well, I could take the blue one. It's going to take get rid of that yellow at the same time. Yeah, I think I might do that. At least I use blue. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Not the greatest start in the world when it's not giving you any of your colours that you, you need. Check brown to green again. Nothing doing. Nothing doing on red. Wow. This board has started off against us in a pretty big way. No way of getting that red to drop down to there either. Alright, I'm going to go on the basis that if I get that I've got plus two brown banner with this plus two brown plus one red so that will get my centurion gun up yes if they take that their doomed axe will be up but that'll allow me to cast centurion gun on the next round so if I take that I don't leave them a lot on the brown to green afterwards, so I'm 
doing that. They didn't take yellow anyway, which is cool. We now get a guaranteed bunch of purple for our Zord with this. Now it's who do we take out first? They are nearly ready. We'll take that anyway. Um, all right, they are entangled, but they're nearly ready to cast. She's just about ready to cast, so that's not great either. Um, don't think we benefit from taking four matches, really. No. But we may get some more skulls dropped down, so I'll do that anyway. Nope, because the more skulls when you cast Zul, the better, really. I am tempted to take out this barley, you know. They are still entangled. And she is nearly ready to do her stuff. Right, I'm going to take out Ishii. And they got hit, so that's good. Now this is a guaranteed load more of mana for our Zul here. Can take out their hero now, but it's only one skull hit away. And I'm going to do that to see if we get any more skulls. Same with that. Any instant or skull drop will get rid of their top troop now. Or any more skulls dropping down will help Zul's spell. Uh, this is not too bad. Just want to um, beat Arachnian Weaver now to casting. Because if we do that, we'll be okay. I might give him that skull hit to get my Centura gun up. Or shall I cast this? How much yellow is there? Not much. Don't mind that. Can deal with that. That's not going to leave them anything. Right, we're guaranteed to get some mana from this. And that is the game. Alright, a bit of a dodgy start on the colours there. Hopefully that won't go on too much like that. But a win's a win. And we started off with 3,246 points. All right, fight two is against Smiley Forest. Is that how you say it? I do not know. But let's see. All right, we've got Le Leonis Tower, Thrall, Trick and Treat, Enraged Kurandara. Both the Leonis Tower and Enraged Kurandara will both be invulnerable, which means Zul cannot kill them. And I'm presuming Trick and Treat is going to be stealthy. Yep, so can't target that either. Therefore, this is the wrong team for this battle. I'll go for a kind of mixture of team which creates a load of skulls and does damage to all uh, on a couple of occasions. But basically, we've got the Mirage Queen giving all elemental allies a 50% start with mana, which is the entire team, and also converts all green gems to doom skulls is the main part of the spell I'm interested in. Uh, we also get damage to all from this weapon. This is pretty cool. As well as transform blue gems to doom skulls. And Infernus deals splash damage to two random enemies. Got to be unlucky not to hit that stealthy trick and treat. As well as get some mana gen. And Shegra trans, uh, creates six red gems. Then turns all red gems to skulls. So we've got red to skulls. Blue to skulls, green to skulls, and normal skulls, damage to all, and damage plus mana gen. So it's a very aggressive mix. The uh, banner for this is pretty important. Crypt banner, plus two red, plus one purple, minus one green. The reason why it's important is because uh, basically that means a mana surge on red or brown means Shegra is ready to go straight away because we've got a 50 percent start and then we get the benefit of those extra red and a mana surge on brown will also be enough because in the class in the champion talents we will have stone mastery which gives a bonus brown so we start with seven if we've got a mana surge that will take us to 13 brown and that gives us the extra one so we get a ready to be ready to go basically on red or brown so let's uh, dive in and hope the game is kind. Is everything? Yep. Let's go. 
A red or brown, please, to get going, or... Full match on green is not too shabby either, we'll take that. Or should I take it from here instead? Is there any difference? Not really. Apart from I like to go against what the AI says sometimes, because normally it's trying to stitch you up half the time eventually. Just another one of my weird conspiracy theories. Right, so... Might as well take that. Sugar is ready to go. Not tons of red there though, this can go wrong. I like to do it when there's like red and skulls in a line. That way it's virtually impossible for Shegra to, to miss. Right now that can actually miss and there's some way short of collecting their mana. So I may collect some red for my Infernus. Still not loving the red positioning that much. I'll grab that anyway. Right, let's cast Infernus. That worked out okay. Shame my uh, crossbow isn't up just yet. I think I'm going to cast Infernus again. Because we're bound to get our Mirage Queen up then as well. And then we might have the option of all... Right, Mirage Queen's up. Again, it's nothing... This is not too bad for Shegra now, because this really can't miss, so we're definitely going to do that. A couple of good hits there. Even with that skull reduction, they won't last too long against all these skulls. And they've got a lot of green there, and there must be a format here somewhere for Mirage Queen, surely. There's a three there. A three there. And not much else. Right, I may play this aggressive because I think that's going to actually take Thrall out and then they, their trick and treat is entangled, so I'm going to go for this. And I'd say that worked out pretty good. So dangerous team and uh, dealt with with that team there. I always loved that team for those tower teams and the enraged Kurandara and that was 1,405 Guild Wars points. Alright, third battle is against Flocky. Flocky, Flocky, Flocky. Child of Summer, first mate, axe lover, doomed opus, enraged Kurandara. So, a double empowered. Start battles with full mana, convert brown to red and blue to red. So, interesting. Chance of getting those four matches when they do that, obviously, at the same time. Um. I'm not going to fight it with this team. I might try it with this one. You can obviously set up a team to try and counter these two. Take them away or something like that. Or go um, entangle on the first opponent. Which is what I like to do against these book teams. The Doomed Opus basically will do scatter damage. But then its main threat is the fact that it creates a mix of six red gems and skulls for every red enemy which is going to be a lot but if their top troop is entangled then it will do a minimal damage so for that reason i'm going to go with this team still or again right and it's brown to green for our gimlet there it's not an extra turn though do you have to be a bit wary of this is Quite a few different things to have a think about here. So we've got brown to red. If I use my gimlet, I'm going to set them up on um, a lot of brown. So I don't want to really cast him. And they've got blue to red there. So let's take a look at this one first. Brown to red. We need to disrupt this. Absolutely. They've got a small amount of value from this one. And blue to red is not too bad. So I think we take this one here. They didn't take that anyway. So that's not too shabby, Shirley. Now we have got a green to brown, but we're still frozen on 
Gimlet. Oh, that doesn't matter about that. So we can do that. Transform green to brown and enrage and give life to the first ally, which is quite handy. Now he's up. We're going to get a lot of mana from this. Um, yeah, this is good for Zool. Not even going to bother taking this one because we're frozen on Gimlet. You're frozen on the colour, not the actual troop. So we'll absolutely do that now. That's got our Zool up. Now we'll take away the hero because he was the most, or she even, was the most dangerous thing there. Centurazol. Centurazol, I always call it Centurazol because of the mix. This is my the team I created. It's a mixture of Centurigan and Zol. I end up calling Centurigan Centurazol half the time because it's the combination which creates this team. Ah, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so let's do this. Let's get rid of somebody else. Can't hit it on Enraged Kurandara because he's impervious. He just gave my Centurigan a lot of slaps. Right, this can still work like this if you do this now for Zul and get Zul charged up again. Um, which is not guaranteed. There's not absolutely a guaranteed amount of mana for Zul at this occasion. But when you cast the... When you cast Zul, you create a lot of skulls and you can actually still make it work that way. So I am still going to do that. And Could just give him a skull bash. Why not? Gimli is still frozen. Not a lot of yellow gems near the middle, so we're not going to get a ton of mana gen from this. And there's not enough skulls to justify casting. Centurigan. So I suppose I could collect something for Zul. Kind of want to cast my Fist of Heaven. But there's not a lot of yellow on the board, which right now is good for if he, they get to cast their enraged Kurandara. So for that reason, I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to kill it quite yet. Don't use green there, so let's see if we get another lucky skull drop near the top, which we haven't. This will get Zool up, probably. So I'm going to do that and see if we get a lucky skull hit anywhere. Nope. Right, uh, so... Uh -uh. Shall I cast Zool and see if we get a lucky couple of skull hits? It's not enough skulls there. Right, let's take that first. Oh, come on. How about some skulls on the board? Lots of yellow now, so get rid of that yellow first. Oh, it's set them up quite nicely there. That's okay. We get to go again. Lots of uh, skulls now, so let's see if we get a good hit. And we did. We got a summon of a bandit, because... Um, not quite sure if I've done that quite right then, actually. It worked out in the end. Could have gone about it a different way, but... Would have, could have, should have, and all that stuff. Everybody can be wise in the... In hindsight sometimes, but 1,495 points there. All right, fight four against the champion is... <laughs> is against slap nuts. I say no more. Uh, we'll go back to our other team then, the aggressive tower bashing team basically only difference for this one is they got leprechaun there instead for a fast start but yep we'll go for this again nice start on red there Let's see if there's any advantage of taking it this way or this way first Uh, yeah, this way, this gives us a skull hit at the same time. And we'll take this, because we'll get 
blue and red. If I sound like I'm saying really obvious stuff sometimes, it's because I do do, I do do, I try and do my videos for the benefit of newer players at the same time. So you can hopefully learn some tactics and stuff like that. Right, I'm going to give them a skull hit and get my Infernus up, I think. Don't mind the odd hit here and there. Right, we're frozen on blue, so I don't particularly want to take that. So for that reason, I'm going to cast my Infernus. I think I'll be taking this four match here. Do have some more red on the board before I cast my Shegra. Trick and Treat is ready, which is a bit of a concern. That thing is a nightmare. Mirage Queen is ready, but no, no four matches anywhere, so I'm not having an awful lot of luck so far on this. Right. This is a risky cast of Shegra, it really is. If I've done that, we've got a guaranteed single hit at the top. Mirage Queen is in no way guaranteed to work. And they're bound to cast their Trick and Treat next. So I'm gonna go with Shegra. Could have been worse. We'll um, that. Shame I can't cast this now because this is lovely at the bottom now. All right, come on. Um, right, what should we do? Infernus. All right, Mirage Queen. Has recovered, and we have a four match here. First hit is going to wipe out the first opponent, which is nice. Did I have lightning strike on this or anything like that? I need to check. I don't think there is. No. The reason why I was checking is because I wouldn't mind taking this first for Shegra, but I don't want it then exploding and then ruining this down here. Because I haven't got lightning strike which you have no control over, means I can take this first. And then that. Right, now I can get my weapon up like this. Or is it more beneficial to leave the red there for Shegra? Not really. So we'll get that ready. Anyway, just in case we get a favourable colour drop near the top. He's a poet and don't even know it. Not enough red for Shegra, so I'm going to cast this again. That stealthy opponent can't hide from that, which is really cool. Let's take out their trick and treat, I reckon. See you later. Not been the quickest game in the world, this one. The colours just haven't gone our way to make it so. I've turned into Jean-Luc Picard all of a sudden. No real red alignment either with skulls to make it worthwhile with Shegra, so... Come on, game. Stop making life difficult. Get that rather than the yellow, because Kurandara wants that purple. All right, this is a lot better now on red. We've got a few different alignments, so we'll do this now. And Shrekra's still there, and they will die. We must have a skull hit, and we do. Right, not too bad. Not brilliant, but a bit slow, but 
the colours are what the colours are sometimes, isn't it? Not so much you can do about that. Ended up with a not too bad a score, 1,588 points that time. Right, last fight against the Paragon is Dracus. It's the uh, oh, same team as we had earlier. So in that case, we go back to our Centurazul team. A combination of Centurigan and Zulgoth. Archer class entangling the first opponent. Which means, unless they get a really lucky early cleanse, even if they get to charge their Doomed Opus, it will be doing very minimal damage. Look for brown to green early doors, because if we've got this, this is actually not too bad. Apart from we have to work stuff out afterwards, because we create brown, and any brown we leave behind, they're going to convert to red. And it's not an extra turn on the green to brown there. So, right, if we leave it as it is, we can take that normally. I still want to get a small amount of value from that. No, they're not. And this one, blue to red. Initial first glance, this looks a lot worse. Three match there. Oh, I don't know, it's not too bad actually. It looked, first glance, looked like that was had to give them something really, really good. Just double checking this. Because I sit too close to a 65 inch telly, you see. And that's, it's great for action games and driving games and things like that, but... When it comes to looking at a gem match board like this, you do realise when it's on a smaller screen or you're further away, you do see things a lot more clearly. So nothing, there's a three match there and that is it. That's going to set me up for a four match if anything. Alright, that's not too bad. So I can collect something for myself then basically. Still tempted to do this myself. Alright, if I do that, I'm going to take all them away. Yeah, I think I have to do that. Because that pretty much gets my Centurion ready. And that worked out pretty much as I suspected it might. Let's grab some of these. Alright, this is going to be good for Azul now. Lots of red. No need to collect that brown. It's a wasting a turn. Alright, he's ready. Let's get rid of their hero. Kaboosh. This is going to be good for Centurion again. Let's get rid of the non-entangled opponent. They're gone. Just Kurandara to deal with. Now, Zulgoth can't take him out, but... It is still kind of useful because you can create a lot of skulls afterwards. That didn't work out super fantastic. Carlos Hyper Fandango anti-ballistic bulletproof kind of thing there. No idea what I just said. I kind of made it up as I went along. Probably should have just gone with the skulls, but hey ho, it's done now. Shall I cast Zorl and see how many skulls we can align? Hmm. There's not much yellow there for him, even if he gets to charge his weapon. We've got everybody charged, so... Uh, 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 uh. The game is kind of safe, but kind of... Um, everybody charged and not a lot to do with them. It's kind of a bizarre situation, to be honest. Do that for no particular reason. We can do some tiny damage on him. Uh, so let's see if we can get some skull matches. Oh, no. Not on your Nelly. 
I'm going to give my skull hit after that, which is going to be 68 damage. I could charge Zool up again and try the same thing again. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, that didn't work out again. Didn't really want to give him that skull hit, you see. So we wiped out the first bunch of opponents really quickly. And now... We're pity pattering around the last one. Give me some skulls on the board game, goddammit. It's truth. Might as well. Oh, come on, one more skull. Oh, dear. All right, let's try again. Huh. Got another single hit, I suppose. Better than nothing. Green to brown. Might as well do this. Give first troop a bit of life. Let's do this. All right, that was not too shabby, Shirley. Let's give him another slap. One more Bosch away, and there it is. Bit of a palaver of what the hell to do next towards the end of the game, but um, got there eventually. And that was 1,728 points. Let's have a look, have a look at the total. So, 9,462, which is okay. It's not spectacular, but it's all right. Whatever it is, there's um, day one of Guild Wars done, and maybe see you tomorrow for the next one. If you found the video useful, anything handy, like the teams, or want to put your teams in the comments below, anything like that, feel free to do so. But um, yeah, hit the like and subscribe button if you feel like it, if you've not done so already. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.